The Universal Selector. What is it and why do we need it? Let's check it out. So, you may have recently started learning CSS or you've been watching some coding tutorials. You heard someone talk about the Universal Selector. Well, I mean, what is that? If you can't tell by the name, it's a selector that selects universally all of your elements. So it selects all of your elements in your HTML. So then you might wonder why would you need to select every element? What um, what properties could would you need to declare on every element in your in your CSS? It seems kind of like I don't know. It kind of seems like there's there's not one specific property that you would want to put on every single thing, but there are at least a couple reasons why you would want to do this. And the reason why is because browsers, your, your browser, your web browser will basically impose uh, defaults. It has browser defaults on certain properties. And a couple of those properties are margin and padding. So if you have tr ever tried to write a piece of code and you, then you looked at your, your page in your browser, you might have noticed that it looked differently than you thought that it was going to look. And it might be because the browser is imposing those defaults on it, which is then throwing off what you've declared in your style sheet. So there is a way to basically cancel that out and start from scratch. And the way you do that is through the universal selector. So we write the universal selector using an asterisk. So we type asterisk. curly braces and then we could write some things in here to declare uh, we could write some properties in here to describe what we want to happen with the universal selector with every element on our HTML so we would go we would say margin 0 padding 0 this cancels out what the browser wants to impose on your code as far as margin and padding goes. So there's also a um, at least one other thing that you could do to ensure that your code comes out looking the way that you want it to. So basically the default box model in CSS, the way that it calculates your dimensions of your boxes, so basically it adds the width with your declared padding to get your total width. So let's say you had an element that you said, okay, let's say you had a class <clears throat> of header and you wanted to say, okay, it's width, I want it to be 100 pixels for whatever reason you want your header to be 100 pixels wide. <laughs> okay, and then you said, I wanted it to have a padding of 20 pixels okay the way the browser is going to uh, compile this is it's gonna say it's gonna take your hundred pixels width and it's gonna actually add your 20 pixel padding and since you have 20 pixels all around it's gonna be 20 pixels on each side so now you have 100 plus 20 plus 20 is equal to 140 so the total width of this element is going to be 140 pixels then if you were to add a, a border to it say border five pixel solid green um, for whatever reason you want this atrocious five pixel green border okay it would also add that to it on the outside of it so then you got 100 plus 20 plus 20 plus 5 plus 5 equals 150. This gets really confusing when you're trying to nail down sizes and dimensions uh, in your layout. It gets really confusing trying to add all these things together. So instead of this, what we could do is we can actually change the way that the um, CSS is read. <clears throat> There's a property called box sizing. Okay, and what we want to change it to is border box. The default is content box, which is the one that I was just talking about, but what we want to do is change it to border box. So that way, if you declare this again and you said you want it to be 100 pixels with 20 pixel padding, five pixel border, it's going to place all of that inside of your 100 pixel width. 
so the width will be 100 pixels. And this makes it a lot easier when you're trying to lay out your page. All right, so one more thing. This is the universal selector. It selects every element, but what it doesn't do is select pseudo elements. And we want it to. We want, it, we want to apply these properties to pseudo elements as well. So the way we do that is we would separate these with a comma. And I like to separate line two just because it makes it look, it makes it easier to read. So you do our universal selector and we would add in the, our two pseudo elements that we're concerned about, which is before and after, oh, sorry, colon, colon, after. Okay, so now we have these properties applied to every element and every pseudo before element and every pseudo after element. Now you have a completely blank slate and you can get started writing your page.